Hello everybody and a very warm welcome back to Tony Northeastern and I hope you're all keeping safe and well and you're ready for another episode of building this station and yeah we're on to episode 8 now and um, as you can see the builders are now back and uh, they've been quite busy and uh, this is where we left off from last week. Um, we got all the doors done but we're still not quite finished regarding the windows. There's still a few left um, to make. Um, yeah. So before we get started, if we go back to the comments from last week's video, um, there's a couple of explanations needed now. Then. Firstly, the, the lift um, yes, we know there's an underpass underneath the, the platform which comes up via the steps there. So the idea of having a lift is to take uh, any small goods down to the street level um, via the underpass. And as we know, we've got a ramp which goes all the way down to here. So any small parcels and goods and stuff will come out through there. So that's the idea of, of putting a, a lift in. Um, it wasn't planned but I just thought well we have to get the, well, the porters will have to get their goods down to the lower level somehow without dragging them all the way down the steps. We had a few comments um, regarding this lady here. Oops, sorry, Vera. Yes, it's Vera Stanhope. Um, and yes, she is on the layout. Now, how did she get here? Well, that I can quite easily explain. So let's create this scenario. It's 2024. She's left her mobile phone in the office. So she's driving past along this road. Ah, I've got to make a call. So she jumps out of a Land Rover and runs into this police box. Beholding to her, it transforms her back in time to the 1950s stroke 60s and now she's trying to work out what's going on and why she is here on the layout <laughs> anyway that's my explanation why Vera Stanhope is back here right on a serious note let's get back to what we're going to do regarding building the station so I've taken some dimensions off the platform so all I've got to do now is design and draw up the plans for the station build so let's head off to the design room and here we are we're in the drawing room where six weeks ago or seven weeks ago we drew up the first plan for the Time Dog Station and now we can move on to the build as it were and here we have the footprint for the station although the drawing is not too full scale you can see um, the limitations I've got I've got here so take example this building here it's only 240 millimeters in length by 70 millimeters in depth and we've got um, a 35 mil overhang for the canopy from there to there and it's not a lot um, if I stand this column here I don't think it would look prototypical it's, it's space is not there especially when you look at the original photograph so you can see what I mean here the space that we've got here is quite big 
Now that would be about two foot. So there's 12 millimeters. And then if you look at that again, so that's another two foot. So it's about five foot in from the platform. And then you've got at least six and a half, probably seven feet to the edge of the wall back here. And um, we have just not got that um, luxury in space for the platform. And this is what I'm looking at for Time Dock. Um, as you can see, in the background there, you've got pillars. But I think that's because when you walk around the corner, you'll see the same scenario as what we've got here at Time Dock. The stairs that go down um, to a different level. So that's why those columns are there to bridge the, 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 the space between the edge of this building and the edge of that building. So although we can use some columns, we won't be able to do the columns right away along this edge. But we can add these bracketries. And this is the idea I have come up with for joining the two buildings together. So like in the photograph, we've got the columns in between the buildings, which will support two iron works, which will then join this building to this building together. And uh, once the roof's on, it'll become a, a solid structure. So that's the plan there. And then we'll make up those um, right angle brackets that you've seen in the photo to come along this edge of the building and which will then allow the canopy to come up over this edge yep yeah, I think that will work right so now then let's move on to the full scale drawings once. right so let's have a look at the biggest building on this station which is the 310 wide building one so we'll just flip the page over and now we can have a look at what I've been up to regarding designing the building so as you can see we've used the doors and the windows to space out the four rooms that we have here so we have the waiting room the ladies station master's office and the booking office now similar features I'm going to use here is what I've used on South Shield station which is the corbel stones on the end here which is going to support the ironwork which will then join this building to the other building and I'm going to cap off the edge there so this wall here will be slightly higher than this end wall here. Ignore this capping uh, here because that's not going to happen. What gonna ha what's going to happen is I'm going to put a slope in the roof there because in the photograph that you don't well you can hardly see this wall because it's just you can just make out the tiles and uh, as you can see we've got three chimneys here and uh, We've got the sizes for the chimneys over there and how I'm going to put them together. So, yeah, so I managed to get four rooms into that 310 um, wide space. And now we're looking at the end walls. Uh, the end walls are quite narrow, as you can see, they're only 70 millimeters wide and um, so they're just big enough for a, a decent sized building and um, if we look at here or where I've done with the, the cornice that goes all the way around or the fascia panel that goes all the way around I'm trying to work out how I'm going to do the edges and uh, we also have the supporting um, 
wrought iron work there which is going to support the roof down the sides but on the ends I will have the three columns so these here will just run along the sides where the platform is narrow and uh, yeah, so that's the sizes for that and depending on our chimneys we might just have either the one pot or the two and here we have a drawing of the ironwork which is there and that's how I'm going to do it using the TIG welding rods to form this right angle and then we'll just solder a bit in there with some copper rings um, soldered into there as well to form that shape and uh, there's the end view and um, yes yeah, so that's the east end wall and now we have the west end wall which will be more or less similar except here we have a wall which is away from the building and behind the wall we have the gents entrance so that be the entrance into the gents and uh, there is the wall there that's the height and width of the wall just about the same height as the door so that's the end walls we've looked at building one now it's time to look at building two um, slightly shorter in width um, by 60 millimeters. So let's have a look at what we can do with 240 millimeters. Right, we already know about the lift that we have here. So that's worked out at 37 plus 5 millimeters either side. So that's 47 millimeters in wide. And we have the gents, and there's the wall. And as you can see, I've added a brief look at what I've done here with the canopy. Um, and there's the fascia. So that's the style I'm, I'm still looking to do. And there's the support posts. In the previous drawing, we've had three. So these support posts, but I might put four in along that edge just to add a little bit more detail. Um, if we pan back, we can see what I've done here eternally. See, there's the gents, lift, porter's office, and the refreshments room. Obviously, I've got to put a bar in. And uh, we've got two doors, so you can access the refreshments room both sides. And that's what we've got to with the previous building as well is replicate the doors for both sides so we can commentate platform one and platform two and um, yeah closer look at the refreshments room now in the photograph we can see a drinks fountain uh, closer inspection of that photograph shows the drinks fountain actually flush with the wall as you can see there so I might have to cut a hole in the wall and um, put a bowl in the front and then do the drinks fountain that way rather than making a separate drinks fountain like we have here. So I already pre-measured up for that and yet again the drinks fountains will have to be on both sides. So if I've got a cut hole in the wall I'm going to have to reposition that drinks fountain maybe move it slightly over a little bit so there you go so that's the smaller building out of the two a lot of detail there and uh, yeah so I think I've got all the dimensions I need. I mean, little things might change, but um, that's what we're going to look at in a minute. So it's time, yep, to start building the station. We're back at the bench. 
and the first building I'm going to tackle is this one um, because I think I've just got enough doors and windows to complete this build so yeah not only that I want to see how I'm going to fit this lift whether it's going to be like that or whether it's going to be in the middle of the building I think ideally it would be in the middle and then put this door here and just have the one window over there I might even put a couple of small windows there and there but uh, we shall see but that's what we're going to do first we're going to start with this building here first thing I'm going to make is these these supporting stones um, which hold up the iron work uh, so I need four of those but in order to make four of those I need uh, to make up a template so as you can see it's 8mm wide 16mm deep and this is 9mm uh, across from that line to that line and um, once you've cut one out I will glue it onto another piece of 2mm card and then cut round it with a scalpel and that will give me a 4mm thickness and then that will be glued onto the edge of the wall here like so and then a piece of paper will cover the joint so it looks like one stone we should end up with something like this um, I'm not going to glue it on the wall just yet because we've got to cut out for all the doors and windows but I thought we'd make up all these little bits first and as you can see that's 4mm thick so the other wall would put up be behind this and then that will become a solid piece of the wall once it's glued the first set of walls I'm going to do is for the refreshments room and the porter's office and here they are I've pre-marked them ready so this is the end wall this is where the where the steps go down underneath and that wall would go there and this is the end wall where the lift is like so so they're more or less the front and back wall are more or less the same but in reverse um, as you can see the drinks fountain is there and that's the porter's door but over here we've got the porter's windows so if I flip that round you'll see what I mean if you can imagine they were side by side but like that so, as we did with the drawings, we have marked the doors and windows out on the card, so these are ready to be cut out. When cutting out for these doors and windows, make sure you get right into these corners, both ways, there and there, and then score away, score away. And for radiuses, just use the tip of the blade and keep punching little holes, and then score and then do the same to the other side uh, once you've done that then that should just pop out like so then it's just a case of tidying up any loose ends and then the window should drop in you should have about a millimeter gap all the way around that'll come in handy when we come to fit the um, brick sheets once you've cut all the doors and windows out there's only one thing left to do and that's to turn these bits of card into walls. Now I'm going to use the Medcalf brick sheet and it's just a case of just gluing the card or the sheet to the card, uh, wait till it dries and then cut out the doors and windows. Um, I'm just using ordinary PVA wood glue um, to do this. be quite liberal with this glue just uh, remember that once the sheet goes on um, to clean any excess glue out of the cut apertures that you've got because uh, once this stuff goes off uh, it goes off 
quite hard and um, you want to keep the inside edges of your doors and windows pretty clean um, to allow the card to fold around um, which is what we'll do next once this is done so just make sure that every little bit of card has some wood glue on it so what I've done with the end walls is I've taken four millimeters off the width um, to allow for the thickness of the card for the butt joint on the ends and um, what we've done with the brick sheet we've stuck the four mil back on plus um, half a millimeter for the thickness of the sheet so when we stick this sheet onto the card we should have a two and a half mil overlap which will then cover up the white card on the main walls if you like just press that home and I'll show you what I mean so this is the one we've done earlier there's the white edge there's the end wall and then that just butts up just leaving a nice clean edge which we can paint in later moving on to fitting doors and windows it is quite straightforward um, the cutout from the windows if you notch a little corner like so about 2mm by 3mm something like that then you can lie this piece in there And then draw a line and do the same the other side and then cut a smack in the middle of the line cut along the window sill ledge as it were and then cut the radius out make sure you use a small blade for this one and a new blade make sure it's a new blade as well especially for cutting around radiuses and then straight out there and then straight out there that should now fall out with a bit of luck And then we can then fold that around the corners and it should end up nice and flush with the card. Like so. So all we got to do now is drop a little bit of glue in there. You can use PVA wood glue for this or I just use a little bit of rocket glue for, for quickness and then with a toothpick just push the glue up and down that face and then we can push our windows in by pushing our windows in actually keeps the, the card in place as well like so and then what I'll do then is just a couple of drops of super glue um, on the actual window frame and then that's it job done and we'll end up with a finish like that that we've got the doors and windows in the next thing I want to tackle is this here the drinks fountain so let's have a closer look it don't look like much at the moment but as you can see I've super glued a basin on there and what that's made out of is you know your three pin plug protectors the small one if you cut that off about three mil from the edge and then cut it in half again long ways 
just glue one half onto the and you've got the basin for the drinks fountain. Um, another little feature that's on the drinks fountain is when we look at the photograph we have an arch um, across the top of the drinks fountain just there so it's not a brick arch like we've got here over the windows and the doors it's just a, a white arch so what I'll do is I'll paint the whole thing in the same colour as we've done the balustrading and then that will make a, that or that will turn that into a, a nice little feature um, another thing I want to do I want to cut a toothpick in half at that height and glue a piece there and a piece there before I do paint it so I'll make up the arches and I'll glue a little bit of toothpick either side then we can paint that up and this is what it looks like with the toothpicks in and the arch that I've just put in there I'm just um, pressing it home now and then what I'll do is I'll put a back on it on here and I'll put a little tiny tap in there made from copper wire and with a little bit of paint we have now turned them odds and sods into a drinks fountain uh, as you can see we've got a tap in there as well which is made out of a little tiny piece of copper wire in there which is bent uh, 290 degrees and then squashed and then bent again back on itself 90 degrees and then just cut and trimmed to form the, the tap so that's the drinks fountains done and uh, yeah I'll tell you what we'll do we'll go and pop these on the layout and we'll have a look at them after eight weeks we finally get to see some walls go on the platform and it's about time to been a long time coming yeah so I'm quite pleased with the way that that's looking at the moment um, the walls are not stuck together um, not yet anyway because there's still uh, a lot more work to do to them we've got to add the glazing and put some markers on the inside uh, for the ceilings and things like that so yeah there's still a lot more work to do before I stick those walls together okay, so we'll have um, a quick look at the building from the other side of the platform and you can see there is a slight difference in what we have on that side You've only got the one door that side, but an extra window. So yeah, we're slowly getting there at long last. Um, it's, it's great to actually see something on the platform that represents a station. So, I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen. And uh, we'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.